Hello again, my fellow Huckineers. This time, I bring you the Scout. Yes, the Scout Mech. The dreaded Scout Mech that you all hate so much. Pause here for the mech stats. But yes, you hate it because you do not understand the Scout. How are these hackers moving so fast? What is going on? I can't... Calm down, all right? The Scout, once you understand it, how to use it, It'll help you understand how to fight it, and fighting it will become a lot easier. So, pay attention, and scouts will become a lot easier to deal with. But, enough of that. Let's get going. Okie dokie. So, the scout, it starts out with the weapons of the mini flat cannon and the tow rocket. Both weapons are pretty simple to use. I mean, the tow rocket, you're all well familiar with. Just remember, always use that air burst. And the mini flat cannon, if you see my Vanguard video, it's the same mini flak cannon, It's if you've seen my Raider tutorial, it's similar to the Reflak. But yeah, this is the mini flak cannon, it's automatic shotgun, you already know my opinion on it, I personally don't like to use it. I mean, it's got insanely high DPS, but, you know, I don't like the heat generation on it, and uh, for some reason my uh, aim with the mini flak cannon is not so great. And yeah, those are the weapons. And as for the ability, the ability is called Fuel Reserves, and trust me, you're going to need it because, well, as it says, uh, it refills your fuel tank, or not the whole thing, I'd say, like, almost, it almost fills the entire thing, but trust me, you're gonna need it because the Scout has the smallest fuel tank in the game, so. And remember what I said, if you see my Berserker video, in fact, if you not see my Berserker video, I'd go check it out, because the way the Scout plays, comparing to the Zer Berserker, is similar, although it's probably has it as... I mean, it's got its differences, which I'll tell, obviously, but anyways, let's get moving. But yeah, it has a tiny fuel tank, especially compared to the Berserker. Berserker's got one of the bigger fuel tanks than all the light mechs, but yeah. Scout has the smallest in the game, and fuel reserves is used to refill that fuel tank. And how I'd use it is uh, to escape. Don't waste your fuel reserves because you uh, rushed into battle too fast and you're out of fuel. No, make sure to... Make sure to try to use this ability when you're trying to escape, because it actually does give you a boost speed increase for about a second when it's active, so, you know, it's very useful for escaping, you know, go in, take out your target, and then get out. And as far as the stats, I mean, as you already know, the Scout is the fastest mech in the game in both walking speed and boost speed. Well, actually, technically, the Technician walks a little bit faster than the Scout, but, you know... That, but uh, yeah, other than that, the Scout is the fastest mech in the game, however, it is the second lightest in the game. It's only got five more armor than the Technician, so you really gotta watch yourself. And so, how I play it is not quite like the Berserker, because compared to the Berserker, for the love of God, stay on the ground. I see too many flying Scouts, and trust me, the Scout is slower than the Rocketeer in the air. It's slower than the Rocketeer in the air. It's slower than a heavy mech in the air. I cannot get this point across enough, seriously. If, you, if you're gonna fly in your scout mech, you're just asking to be killed because you are a flimsy little thing and if you take even, if you even get sneezed on, you're gonna die. I mean, seriously, a single tow rocket to you will spell death because after that, people can easily just mop you up with a Vulcan or an SMC. So with the scout, make sure you're always flanking, getting people from behind, from the sides, dodging around them, confusing them, you know, the five Ds of dodgeball. Duck, duck, no, dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Just do the five Ds of dodgeball. That'll definitely help inside of the scout mech. <laughs> but in all seriousness, yeah, it, you do have to be very careful uh, inside the scout. I mean, you are the lightest light mech out there, aside from the technician. But, you know, you do have a, quite a bit of damage output, but the damage output's not going to be good if you keep taking damage yourself, because you are not able to take a beating at all. You really got to be able to practice dodging and know how to avoid, uh, learn how to avoid rockets and all that. Especially learn how to play with cover and learn how to play peekaboo inside of the scout. Although, with the mini flat cannon, it is a little bit better to catch people out in the open with the scout and try to dodge around them and confuse them more so with the mini flak, because, you know, if it's... it's it's got a really high sustain damage, but you know, uh, again, mini flak scouts are few and far between. I don't see that. I don't see very many mini flak scouts doing very well. I mean, I've seen a couple that have done it really, really well. I mean, because like I said, uh, this has some of the highest damage per second in the game. So you know, if you can pull off a mini flak scout, just remember to dodge around, confuse your enemies, don't stand still ever, and don't fly. If you're gonna fly, just hop up really quick and then back down. Although, like I said, when you hop and uh, you and you land, you're uh, you're immobile for about a split second, and so people and some enemies are able to do that. 
What can help compensate for that would be the air compressor. The air compressor on a scout is pretty good, but other than that, I'd say just try your best to stay on the ground inside of a scout. But yeah, I can tell you this right now, the scout is one of the best mechs for one-on-one uh, -on -one fights that there is. However, as soon as the, your enemy count goes above one, that's where the problems will, uh, that's where problems arise. But yeah, it looks like we're moving on to the next weapon. Okay, so this is the rank 3, uh, not the prestige, the alternate weapon, the flak cannon. And so now you guys know why I call my bra my flak brawler the fat scout. Because of this weapon loadout right here that's available for the scout. And if, actually, if you see my brawler video already, uh, a flak scout actually plays pretty similar to a flak brawler, except that it's faster. And But for those of you, in case you haven't seen it, I still recommend you go watch my brawler video. Even though you haven't, if you don't have a brawler, I mean, it's still good information and you will know how to fight brawlers. But, uh, yeah, it's plays pretty similar, except it's got a lot more speed, so you can basically, yeah, it's basically a really fast brawler in that sense. It, ha it still has the same punch and, uh, you know, killing power as a brawler does. It's just, you gotta remember, you don't have as much armor in exchange because you get the higher mobility. So, you definitely want to stay around corners and be able to, uh, yeah, yeah, stick around corners into cover because unlike the mini flat cannon, the flat cannon doesn't have as much sustained damage, which means out in the open, stuff like uh, the Vulcan or the SMC is just going to tear you to pieces because, you know, uh, if you're out in the open, and those weapons are very, very easy to land, uh, flat cannon, you know, you're going to you cannot miss your shots, otherwise you're just going to be dead. And another reason why I prefer the flak cannon over the mini flak is because, well, the heat management's a little bit easier because, you know, I can do a lot of damage and then, you know, maybe wait a little bit longer because then, you know, because I don't have to feel like I have to hold the mouse down with the flak cannon versus, like, the mini flak cannon. In order for you to do the damage, you got to hold the mouse down. It just generates a lot of heat. So, yeah, that, that's another reason why I prefer the flak cannon over the uh, mini flak. And I will tell you this right now, most of the higher level scout pilots this is the weapon that they use. Like, guys like Omega Null, like, he's the guy who basically taught me how to play Scout really well. He uses the flat cannon, and he'll even tell you that it's probably the best option on the Scout. However, you know, don't let our opinion sway you. F pick what you like, and uh, just roll with it, as I always say. Uh, our is our own opinion, and, uh, you know, different play styles might suit you, and they may not, so. But, yeah, once you know how to play a Scout, Flak Scout's actually, I think it's actually a little bit easier to pull off than a mini Flak Scout is because, you know, because of how well that the Scout can play peekaboo. Because, as I said, the Scout has some of the best uh, ability inside of a 1v1 one in one one dueling situation. But, you know, there are weaknesses to the Scout, which I'm probably going to go over, and it's probably what you guys want to hear the most. First and most obvious weakness is that the Scout is very much a close-range mech, so... If you keep your distance from it, you shouldn't have too big of an issue. I mean, you still might not have to worry about tow rockets landing in your face, but, you know, other than that, you won't have to take the full brunt of their flak or mini flak cannon. Or the prestige weapon, which I'll explain in a little while. Okay, second thing is that scouts, they're not very good at managing enemies that are, you know, more than one enemy at a time. Even, in, even when it has a team backing itself up, if more than one enemy decides to shoot at the scout, the scout is just, you know, it's made out of paper, basically. I mean, if more than one mech is shooting at it, it's just gonna go down. Especially if it's fr coming from, if the fire is coming from more than one direction, because it, no amount of dodging in the world will shoot, will uh, help you to avoid shots coming from two different directions. Trust me, you know, as soon as, like, uh, one other person starts, you know, helping out the target that I'm trying to fight inside of my scout, just game over for me, because I can't, I can't uh, take the brunt of that uh, damage, because, you know, Scout is way too light. At that point, it's just like, I just gotta bail. Because, you know, if I have no cover, the Scout is just, you know, very, very vulnerable. Which is another one of the big vulnerabilities of the Scout, is big open spaces. In open areas, the Scout is very weak because, you know, most of its uh, weapons are very much burst-oriented. And plus, it's a very light mech. So, stuff like the SMC, Vulcan, you know, the Incinerator's baby uh, bear, or any of the miniguns. Any sustained weapon, a high-powered sustained weapon, it will just tear the scout to pieces because, you know, it just cannot take that beating. Provided that you can follow the scout and it's not dodging like a maniac, well, even if it is dodging like a maniac, here's a small tip. I mean, there still is a one-second dodge cooldown, and so dot, shoot your rocket or your sable launcher, whatever have you, shoot your secondary weapon after the scout dodges because there's a split second, after the dodge is complete, that the scout is completely still, 
and there's a full second where they won't be able to dodge. So, so take that into account and use patience to your advantage in that case. And yes, the prestige weapon just showed up, and let's move on to that now. Although, just one quick note. That thing I said about patience and waiting till after the mech dodges, that works for any mech in general, especially A-classes. That's usually when you want to fire your rockets or whatever. Because that's what most of the be better players do, is that they wait till after that their enemy dodges, and because then they're, you know, immobile and they can't dodge your rocket at that point. So, patience definitely pays off, especially when uh, fighting, like, A-class mechs, and, you know, because they're, you know, zipping around everywhere. But yeah, let's just move on to the prestige weapon now, which is the Heat Cannon! Yes! My favorite heat cannon on the scout. I love my heat scout. And essentially how the heat cannon scout plays is basically the flak scout, but with more range. Yeah, uh, yeah, it makes the scout to be able to fight at mid-range and not just, you know, close up. And so that's what I really love about the heat cannon scout. And plus, the heat cannon has a bit more burst damage than the flak cannon does. You know, I'll be that it is a little bit harder to land, obviously, but you know, the heat cannon scout is one of the scariest mechs out there because, you know, not only do they play peekaboo all day and they use cover to their advantage to be able to make them hard to hit, but they also have distance as well. They can play peekaboo from a longer distance, so it is a lot harder to try and get them. Also, if you want more specific instructions on the heat cannon, go watch my infiltrator video. I go over the heat cannon much more in depth in that as well. Because I just want to focus on how it plays on the scout. But like I said, how it plays on the scout, comparing it to the flat cannon, it basically plays as a longer range flat cannon scout. And I will tell you this right now, flat cannon scout is really easy compared to you doing a heat cannon scout. Heat cannon scout takes a lot of practice to try and play off. I mean, you gotta know how the heat cannon works. However, the heat cannon works really well with a tow rocket because they actually have somewhat similar flight speeds. I mean, the tow rocket's slightly faster than an uncharged heat cannon shot, but, you know, they actually do fly at somewhat similar speeds, so you only have to lead one target. But if you decide to use charge shots, then, you know... Actually, an interesting thing is because of the charge shots, is that the time by the time you fully charge a shot, a tow rocket would have already reloaded, so sometimes what I can do is I can fully charge a shot, wait for my tow rocket to reload, then bang, shoot once, dodge, and play peekaboo that way, charge up another heat cannon shot, and by then, my tow rocket's already reloaded, so I can give him another full volley like that. That's one small strategy that I can use. But, like I said, you don't always have to charge it, and learning how to uh, uh, land the uncharged shots will definitely help, especially in much more open scenarios. Just make sure to watch out for your splash damage when using the heat cannon, because I've accidentally shot myself in the foot plenty of times while playing my heat cannon scout, both from my tow and my heat cannon. Trust me, it's pretty crippling when you do it. You know, shooting yourself in the face. Ugh quite embarrassing too, but you know, that's just the one thing you gotta watch out for. So yeah, like I said, the, the Flak Scout is a little bit easier to use. And then the Mini Flak Scout, I'd say, I mean, you can pull it off, but I'd say it's a little bit harder to use than the Flak Cannon Scout. Although it's definitely uh, easier than the Heat Cannon Scout. Yeah, it's definitely really good. And also, one more, another thing on the, the Scout Mech is that shields. Oh my god, shields. I love shields inside of my Scout Mech. I can, you know, as I've said, I can use it to duel really, really well. In fact, uh, Omega Null, the guy who taught me how to play Scout, he really, he's actually the guy who taught me how to duel inside of shields, use them as traps, all that great stuff. In fact, I'm probably going to post up a video of uh, some of the stuff that he explained to me so I can show it to you guys, even though, you know, I probably shouldn't, and I'm giving away trade secrets, but, you know, oh well. I love you guys, so I might as well teach you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as far as a Scout mech goes, that's... It's pretty simple, you know, it's just make sure you're flanking, always, you know, trying to, trying to, blah, 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 you know, catch people by surprise, as, you know, just generally how you play Amex, just remember to be careful and stay mobile, definitely have to stay mobile inside of your scout. And don't fly too much either, because the scout mech is not very good in the air, you know, but, you know, and, uh, just gonna quickly go over my items internals so I can wrap things up. Yes, I use, again, the shield because I said I can duel really, really well inside of them and I love shields. And, of course, the repair charge and I'm also gonna use the detonator because in case I need a little bit of extra burst damage because of somebody's chasing me. Oh yeah, by the way, small tip, never chase a scout. Scouts are actually defensive mechs and uh, if you try to chase one, they're actually gonna be very, very tough to try to chase down because scouts are really great for setting traps. Generally, if a scout's playing much more aggressively, it's a little bit more vulnerable because it has to get out in the open a little bit more. So, another small tip. But yeah, uh, again, just the shield repair charge, the detonator, and of course my internals are still the basic deflectors, basically 10% extra health on the scout. The evasive device, 
extra speed on the scout makes the scout just super fast and then the air compressor really helps when I need to get in the air and plus you know it just definitely helps with mobility but yeah this was my scout mech guide I hope you guys enjoyed it next time will be the predator like comment subscribe do what have you but for now this is Hobbs signing off <laughs>